Ladies and gentlemen, we now present George Edwards in Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Who's there? It's Hugh. Hugh Lanyon. Oh, come out of there and act like a human being, you blithering idiot. Anybody else but you, you infernal. Yes, yes, I know. That's what I told Poole. Oh, did he let you in? I'll sack him for that. Splendid. We've anticipated that. I've really engaged him to come to me. Well, come in, come in. <clears throat> well, what do you want now you've got me to open the door? Ah, nice little bad tea you've got here. No risk of unwelcome visitors breaking in with all these bolts and bars. What's the idea? Tell me, what have you been up to? When did you get back and where have you been? I went for a walking tour through Austria and part of Hungary. Oh, oh a great pity you went with me. Never saw such girls. Got there just in time for the summer festivals. I was in my element, old chap. <laughs> I'll bet you were. Uh, sit down over there. Tell me all about it. Thanks. Do you know, I'd forgotten that people like you still existed. No wonder. This is a fine, dreary little morgue you've fixed up for yourself. Oh, tell me, what's that table over there? Looks like something out of the dissecting room. So it is. You see, this whole place used to belong to a famous surgeon before my father bought it. He used to carry out experiments here. Uh, some say vivisection. Uh, no wonder the place brings me out in goose flesh. <laughs> no windows either on the ground level. No. Didn't want anyone peeping in. And soundproof, too. When I shut that inner door, no sound can get through. And this is where you've been most of the summer. No wonder you look as pale as a ghost. Come along out of it. We'll take a bus and have a day on the Thames. You know, I'll bet you haven't had an oar in your hand since you left Oxford. Well, you're quite right there. I haven't. Then how about it? Listen, Will. Hire a punt and get a picnic basket at some nice little country inn and... Lie out on the grass and eat sandwiches and drink good old English beer. <laughs> and you'll tell me all about the buxom peasant wenches you bet out in Austria. Nothing omitted, old boy. Positively nothing. All right. I'll be with you just as soon as I've changed my clothes. Uh, come over to the house. We'll get the rascally pool to put us up some food. <laughs> there speaks the good old Henry Jekyll. Hence loathed melancholy. From Cerebus and Blackus, midnight born. In Stygian cave forlorn, amongst horrid shapes and shrieks and sights unholy. Stop it! Stop it! What made you say that? What do you mean? You say what? What's the matter here? Here I say, that don't throttle me. I'm sorry. I'm awfully sorry, old chap. I don't know what came over me. But those words... Oh, come along. Let's get out of this quickly. Yeah, it can't be too quick for me, old chap. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, um, how about a little more of your father's excellent ale? Which you glass? Uh, beside that tuft of grass. Oh, yes, that's it. Oh, dear, oh, dear. It's good to lie here with the sun in your face and the smell of warm earth in your nostrils. You don't know what sunlight is or how the earth can smell. You've lain out in the sun at midday in those Austrian valleys. <laughs> and at midnight under the moon. <laughs> uh, how I envy you, Hugh. You can take your pleasure so simply. Just as simply as you swallow that glass of ale. I haven't noticed you showing any signs of constriction of the gullet. Ah, but I haven't got the capacity for roistering round Europe. I'm too much of a hypocrite, I suppose. I'm afraid of losing somebody's good opinion. Do you know what's the matter with you? No. Margaret Utterson. What? You've been trying to live up to her and acquire grace in the eyes of that jealous old Puritan of a father of hers. Ah, what rot. Oh, no, it's not. But it's a sheer waste of time. A fellow like you is bound to break out now and again. You know, it's my opinion he delighted at having an excuse for preventing Margaret from marrying you. 
Yes, but why? Well, he'd like to keep her for himself. Life will be very empty for him when she goes. Hmm. You know, he's doing his best to marry her off to uh, John Fairley. She's been staying down at his place for almost two weeks. Hmm, but she's back in London now. I've got an invitation to dinner at her place tonight. Yes, I know. Well, you're going, aren't you? I don't know. What's the matter with you? She won't like it if you're not there. Well, maybe her father is right. I may not turn out to be a very good sort of a husband. Well, I'll be... Yeah, Henry, what's come over you? When I went away, you were crazy over her. I still am. But in the last few weeks, I've begun to think that perhaps I ought not to marry. You mean on, a, on account of your work? Well, principally. Oh, I agree. Women can make the devil's own mess of one's plans. But personally, I think it would be a good thing if you got over Margaret. Oh, you utter fool. I haven't got over Margaret. Can't you understand that, that it's because I think so much of her that I'm trying to keep away? If she's hurt because I don't come tonight, and John Fairley's there, mightn't that make her think better of him? Well, of all the quixotic rubbish I ever heard... You go ahead and marry a girl, whatever the outcome of it may be, wouldn't you? Well... I hope it wouldn't be too horrible. No, that's right. It wouldn't be. Someday you'll marry some pretty little empty-headed creature who'll sit at the foot of your dining table, fill the nursery with children, and think you're the last word in manly virtue and wisdom. Oh, oh that's going too far, old chap. Ah, but you'll be happy. Yes, you'll be happy. In your own way. But me... I'm afraid I'll never be. Oh, now you're getting gloomy again. Time we left. Well, the sun's going behind those clouds anyhow. And if we're going to be in time for Margaret's dinner party... I've told you I don't think I'll go. Oh, nonsense. You're not going to give up like that. Come along and give John Fairley a run for his money. Anyhow, I'd love to see you do a lot of in the eye. I never could stand it. Hello. What's all that about? It comes from that building over there. Have you got any idea what it is? Oh, um, some sort of reformatory, isn't it? That's right, so it is. By Jove, one of the prisoners must have escaped. Yes. Look at the warders rushing out through the gates. I say, is that gun they've got? Hope they don't shoot this way. Well, come along. Let's move off. They're bound to stop us and ask if we've seen anyone and we'll be late enough getting back to town as it is. Yes, I... I say, listen, Henry. Why, there's someone coming this way. In a hurry, too. Now, I wonder if... Look, there he goes behind those bushes. Look, look. Just over there. Good Lord, it's a woman. Well, I'll be... Mr. Henry, tell her forgive me. I'll be somewhere. Yeah, what's the matter with you, I say? Hetty. Hetty Wilson. Who are you? Oh, Henry. You. I say, what? Who? What? Good Lord. It's the girl from the music hall. I'd be... I'd be... I'll be in a minute. And I have to... I have to go back into that place. I'll... I'll kill myself. Here, quick. Into the boat. Get down on the floor. We'll cover you up with rugs. Quick. Help me, Hugh. Oh, but I say... Listen. Don't argue. Help me cover her. All right. And pick up that basket. We've got to be out of the middle of the stream by the time they get here. Now, don't you move, Hetty. Whatever happens. I say, Hetty, look, Hetty, do you realize what you're doing? Yes, I know, I know. I'm helping a prisoner to evade the law. If you like, you can go and call those warders and tell them about it. Oh, here, I say, don't be too hard, old man. Oh, then pick up that basket. Help me push this boat out from the bank. Ready? One, two, three, push. Uh, uh. Now, Hetty, you lie down against those cushions... Pull your hat over your eyes and pretend to be asleep. I'll do any talking that may be necessary. Mm. A nice, quiet afternoon in the country. Look out. Look out. They've seen us. Hello, Hello. Where did you come from? Lower Huntington. What are you doing here? Well, what do you think? Stop that boat while I talk to you. I'll do my best, but the current's pretty strong. Then pull into the shore. 
What for? Because we're the police, and we're looking for a prisoner that's escaped from the reformatory. I'd like to search that boat. Can he swim? What's that got to do with it? Well, he'd have to get us out of here. That's what good we're wasting time. They're just a couple of soft hearts for the afternoon. Let him go. Oh, well, you never know. Oh, what is a low little tough like Eddie Wilson be down to the fair swells like that? Yeah, maybe you're right. All right, then. Off you go. Sure you wouldn't like us to come and help? Well, help you? We got work to do. Come along, boys. Let's have a little fun now. Lie still, Hetty. Don't come out from under those rugs under any circumstances. Are you all right? Oh, yes. I'm uh, very tired of dozing here. Am I allowed to talk in my sleep? It all depends what you want to say. I just want to say that I may have had my moments in the Austrian Tyrol, but you go in for a form of excitement that's far, far beyond my humble scope. Oh, don't jest, Hugh. This is serious. Serious? It certainly is. Both of us might be struck off the rolls of the BMA for conduct improper to the dignity of our profession. Do you realize that? I do. And I'm expected to lie here and pretend to be asleep. Well, you'll have to do more than that before we get Hetty hidden away. Being a friend of yours certainly has its drawbacks. But you are my friend, Hugh, aren't you? Yes. Confound you. Now keep on with that rowing and let's get out of here as fast as we can. I only ordered the brass plate the day before yesterday, and I'll die of disappointment if I get the sack before I have a chance to hang it up. 